Hey, uh, greetings there, Gold Seekers. This is Tim for Blue Lead Gold Productions. Once again, I am nowhere near the Yuba, but this is where the gold in the South Yuba comes from, or one of the locations that it does. Today, I am up on the, um, uh, on the I think it's in the North San Juan Ridge. I am up in a place called Jackass Flats. It's the huge hydraulic mine that's up here in North Columbia. <laughs> And if you look around me, you can see that I am standing in the middle of what has been a, an eroded by hydraulic mining valley loaded with quartz. Let's take a look here. Quartz, quartz, quartz. Loads and loads of quartz here. Quartz as far as the eye can see. Quartz, 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 quartz. So how did all of this quartz get here? Well, I've tried to explain that in some other videos too, but here it goes again. All right, so let's talk about where I am now. I'm in a different hydraulic pit. I changed it up, I fooled you. First I was up in North Columbia, and now I'm in a hydraulic pit that is located, oh, further close out on that ridge in between the uh, South Fork and the Middle Fork. I'll just be vague about the location. But take a look at all these boulders. Look at the size of this huge river-rounded quartz boulder. I will tell you that I'm up at about 3,000 feet or so up in the Sierras, and, and I'm probably at least 1,000 feet up, up above the, um, the Middle Fork and the South Fork right now. And so how did all these boulders get up here? Well, here's the story. Approximately 30 million years ago, there was a, a large mountain range out in the, where the present-day Nevada is located. And the Sierras did not yet exist. Where present-day California is, there was a large, flat, swampy uh, area of land. And across that land, uh, flowed rivers from this ancient mountain range that was out where present-day Nevada is. And in that mountain range out in present-day Nevada, there was um, lots of bedrock and lots of quartz. And over geologic time, which the mind has uh, trouble comprehending because it's so long and so large, um, the river system that flowed out of that mountain range in ancient Nevada deposited boulders full of quartz and also deposited gold all through the area that is now modern-day California. And through the miracle of plate tectonics, the Pacific plate came crashing underneath the continental plate, causing both an uplift of the continental plate and lots of volcanic activity. And what happened with um, the uplift uh, that occurred uh, due to the plate tectonics was that there was um, uh, the rivers that had previously been on flat land, they were uplifted too, along with the, the rest of the, the, the crust and the bedrock there. And there are places in the Sierras where those rivers were uplifted to like nearly 4,000 feet. If you go over the crest of Highway 49, from the canyon of the Middle Fork into the canyon of the North Fork and look at the sides of the canyon, there's a, a place right up on the very top of that ridge where there was an ancient channel and you can see lots of rounded little quartz boulders in there. So look at this, uh, that, air, that first uh, area of the video, Jackass Flats, that area was huge. That area is the channel of an ancient river that was larger than the modern day Mississippi larger than the modern-day Amazon River. And those quartz uh, boulders and other types of cobbles, they, have, uh, they did experiments back in, I think it was the early 80s or late 70s. They drilled down to the bedrock there, and there are places where the, 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 those cobbles and stuff are still stacked 400 feet deep, 500 feet deep. And they never reached... That, that's not a great metal 
a pit to go metal detecting in, number one, because it's private property and they don't want you out there metal detecting. But two, they never got to the bedrock there. Now, in this particular uh, pit, they did get down to bedrock. And if you take a look here, this is actually a large quartz vein. Well, this is part of the bedrock in this pit. And the way that, th that this pit got to its pleasant present complexion is that it was a mountain, like the mountains surrounding us. I don't know if you can see back up there where kind of where I'm pointing to with my finger right now, if I could get to it. Ah, right there. That is, uh, that's, they washed away that whole hillside with hydraulic monitors. And the way the hydraulicing worked was that the, um, uh, they had large reservoirs of water further up the mountains. And they would take that water, they would pipe it down, and as it dropped in elevation, uh, it would uh, build up huge pressure. And so they had what were called giants. They were actually um, uh, nozzles on the end of these long pipes that they could direct at different uh, targets along the mountainside. And they just, they came in here and they literally washed away the whole mountain. There, well, there was probably a mountain 20 feet up above me. So as all of that um, uh, hydraulic uh, gravel was getting washed down out of the mountains, I'll show you where they were. I'll show you where they were washing it. So this is this is where they were washing that gravel. If you take a look here, this is a very deep and steep pit that goes down to a tunnel, and the tunnel that. It has apparently, the entrance to the tunnel has now been covered up. But if you take a look, this pit is like 75, 80 feet deep or so. Uh, it washed into a, 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 everything from around here was washed down into a tunnel that went down towards the middle fork. And apparently at the end of the middle fork tunnel, they had some grizzly bars that took the larger boulders out. And then the smaller stuff fell through their grizzly bars and they um, uh, washed that into their sluice boxes. And then eventually everything went into the middle fork. Whereas uh, being able to dump all their tailings into the uh, South Yuba and into the uh, middle fork of the Yuba was very convenient for the, and profitable for the hydraulic miners. A very efficient way for them to put, process large amounts of material and get a whole lot of gold out of places like this. Uh, Unfortunately, it buried the south fork of the Yuba 25, 30 feet deep, maybe even deeper in, in some spots in tailings. And that was primarily from the hydraulic operations at Molokov, uh, uh, Diggins, and um, also up there where we started this video up in um, uh, North Columbia, where that drained out into Spring Creek. And uh, they, unfortunately, uh, the farmers and the townspeople in Sacramento and Marysville were very unhappy with that situation because when the winter rains would come, the channels that had been uh, etched out over the eons for uh, the rivers to flow out uh, into the Delta, um, or into the, I guess into the Sacramento River and then into the Delta, uh, they got all silted up and filled up with the hydraulic mines tailings. And then all the farmers uh, and the townspeople down there in Marysville and Sacramento got flooded all the time. And so they did what uh, any sensible group of citizens would do. They hired lawyers and they sued. And um, uh, that litigation was called the um, Sawyer litigation. Eventually in about, I think it was the 18, early 1880s, there was a decision by the United States Supreme Court called the Sawyer decision that basically shut down almost all the hydraulic mining operations because it said that they could no longer dump their tailings out into the river. They could still mine hydraulically, but they just couldn't be dumping all their tailings in the river. And when you can't dump your tailings into the river, apparently most of these operations just couldn't continue profitably. So that is, thank goodness, why um, uh, there is so much gold in the South Yuba. 97% of the gold that you'll see me mining in a, a video of me mining on the South Yuba is going to be gold that um, uh, came uh, out of tailings from the uh, old timer sluice boxes. Thank goodness they were so inefficient. They got more efficient when they started using mercury in them. 
uh, but um, uh, uh, just a whole lot of the gold. They cleaned them out once, maybe twice a year, and um, they just washed a whole lot of the small gold uh, down in, into the rivers. And so that's the story of hydraulic mining. That's why um, uh, we like hydraulic pits, because we come up here to these hydraulic pits and we go metal detecting. And um, it, I had a, another great adventure with Cario, the Waikiki sniper today. We were down on the Middle Fork for a while, and now we're at a, a hydraulic pit that used to drain into the Middle Fork. So until next time, this is Tim. Oh, I'm drinking a cold Heineken at the end of the day. It's been a good day. Um, until next time, this is Tim for Blue League Gold Productions saying, Aloha. <laughs>